Hey Upper East Siders, Gossip Girl here. It's exciting to look back in celebration of, of the last six years. Did you really go out with some guy you don't know? Well, you can't be worse than the guys I do know. It's been a long, fantastic ride. Everyone's enjoyed it immensely. I'm Chuck Bass, and I love you. I could have never expected that I would be able to play a character for six years that's so well-written and challenging. Haven't you heard? I'm the crazy bitch around here. Love is need, love is, and I'm impressed. We're shooting in Manhattan. It doesn't get any better than that. Goods out on display. I feel a little like Alice in Wonderland. Manhattan will do that to a girl. It was just such a love affair with the city and everything that it has to offer, from fashion to food to music. New York has never seen more perfect. And there's a knit girl in every corner. Stop. Don't get carried away. I went into it really hoping that this would make its mark as the new fashion TV series. I'll pop. <laughs> the formula of the show was what made it what it is. Good morning, beautiful. Drop down from some mother It was very surreal for me. I had people coming up to me on the streets telling me they hate me. There was literally 40 paparazzi and 200 girls screaming and gathered around our trailers. I think the storytellers were really excited to be bringing the story to fruition. The feeling right now is a, it's a poignant one, it's good. Not the sad, empty nest face already. It's been a wonderful character, and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. How can you say we weren't important? We were the only thing that matters. I am going to run down Broadway naked with champagne. Oh! It's gonna be sad not seeing everybody and seeing their face every day. I think we ought to say a proper goodbye. It's gonna be really strange to not have that every day. I think we're all gonna go through a bit of withdrawal. You can let go now. I don't want to. Spotted at Grand Central, bags in hand, Serena Vanderwoodson. I was coming off the end of the OC and had very little interest in doing another teen drama. And then I got sent the first book in the Gossip Girl book series. And I was like, I may not be ready to leave high school after all. Don't ever go to high school, Dorota. The girls are spoiled, stupid, and ungrateful. Stephanie Savage is one of the smartest, most talented people I've ever met. And she got really excited about it as well. And we were off to the races. The setting in New York City, in this elite Upper East Side society, that's for sure a world that is really alluring. Are you following us or something? No, I, I, I go to your school. The books really laid it out very well. They're juicy and salacious and fun, and everything is said with a bit of a wink. What's that, your stripper money? Sex in the City had gone off the air. There was really nothing on TV that had that romantic version of New York, and I really missed that just as a fan. And then, of course, the anonymous online blogger who was watching everybody's moves and reporting it. Is that true? What? You were in jail? That was something that felt like it was a real hook to the show. And who am I? That's one secret I'll never tell. When Cecily wrote the books in 2002, uh, Perez Hilton and TMZ didn't even exist. So she had really kind of imagined something that ultimately came to pass. My god, you'll never believe us on Gossip Girl. Someone saw Serena getting off the train at Grand Central. The tagline for the first season was, you're nobody until you're talked about. It definitely was ahead of the trend. The lives that these kids were living was so fascinating that there was a website devoted to them that they had to read endlessly. And I think it just really captured the moment of the world we were in. It was really important to us that we actually shoot the show in New York. That's the thing they say about New York, is you point the camera in any direction and it looks good. Not to mention just the, the authenticity. Hey, Serena, why don't you get a room? Well, that's the plight of the Manhattan teenager, no cars. A lot of shows are based in New York, but film in LA. And so you don't get the magic of walking down, you know, a street in Soho and seeing all the things happening and the cabs going around in the, in the background. It's very much one of the most important elements of the show. Dan, oh my God, this is what I love about this city. You're always bumping into people. Stephanie went and kind of immersed herself in the, uh, in the girls prep school world. I stayed at the Carlisle Hotel and I did research talking to about a dozen girls, asking them questions about their lives. 
I reviewed your record. If Constance has a shining star, it's Blair Waldorf. I know. I'm the perfect one. Stephanie is so involved in every single detail. She typed out her own little essays of girls who lived on the Upper East Side, and they were even more wild than the books. I've been drinking on an empty stomach. I heard you didn't do that anymore. Special occasion. I don't know exactly how I tune in to that kind of upbringing or lifestyle because that's not how I was raised at all. I'm from South Florida. That's not what it's like. Oh, I cannot believe that Daddy decided to stay with Ramon instead of having tea at the Carlisle with me. It was taking people into a rarefied world and a world that is seductive but also problematic. So you're actually hiding him. He tries to take his own life, and you're worried it's going to cost you mom of the year? Serena, as happy as I am to have you home, you have no idea what it's been like. We really wanted this idea of, like, family and relationships, all these things that are so universal to uh, any coming-of-age story, to be true here. We deal with the same things at the end of the day. At first, we didn't have a lot of access in New York City. It was like, well, what is this show? I don't know. But very, very quickly, I think people recognized that if you were on the show, it was a good thing. Welcome all to the McKittrick Hotel. At the beginning, that was great because every, every new location was somewhere, you know, we hadn't maybe seen before. Back room of some cool bar, you know, and oh, I want to come back here. We always saw the show as a real love letter to New York City. Now there are Gossip Girl tours of New York City where you go by the locations that the characters visited. When Mayor Bloomberg was here, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Therefore, I, Michael R. Bloomberg, Mayor of the City of New York, the hero proclaim Thursday, January 26, 2012, in the City of New York as Gossip Girl Day. Congratulations. XOXO. It's been everything we hoped it would be without it kind of sounding arrogant or anything. It's like the show's become one of the things that tourists like to come to New York for. And I just find that remarkable, you know, because in the beginning you have no idea or expectations that large, because you can't really, you know. All right, Dan, Jenny, Humphrey Huck. <laughs> Eric and Lily get in here too. party Saturday and you're kind of not invited Josh and I are psychos about casting and we really did feel with Gossip Girl that we had something special at the time I was living in LA and I was auditioning every single day for pilots and automatically I was like I love Blair I want to play that character so I auditioned for it probably like 20 times. It was like probably my number four read. Wow. I kind of sit in this little swivel chair and this girl just kind of swivels around like cute as a button and it was late. Thank you. And she had the headband and she just was like, hi. And I, you know, I'm like, if this girl can act, she's got the part. <sighs> Break a leg. I think I just did. More than anything, I just wanted to work. I could have never expected that I would be able to play a character for six years that's so well-written and really challenging and great. We really believed in all the various pairings, and the chemistry, and that, you know, Blair and Serena feel like best friends. I still miss Dan sometimes. The only thing lamer than dating Dan Humphrey is mourning Dan Humphrey. The Humphrey family, we felt, had this great, warm chemistry. She might be a tad overwhelmed by the glitz and the glamour of the Humphrey lifestyle. Nate Archibald is this kind of lost, rich kid. Do you ever feel like our whole lives have been planned out for us? And, you know, Chuck Bass, who at the time was pure villainy. I love freshmen. Anything about her on Gossip Girl? Nah. Hmm, until you're done with her. When we shot the pilot, we all lived in the same hotel together for those few weeks. And New York City, oh, it was the most incredible place in the world. It was a fantastic feeling, you know, because everybody felt equally uh, as excited um, and probably a bit nervous. You know, you felt like you were kind of thrown into something together. It basically is like the best of all possible excuses to be in New York and live in New York. It was so fun to see these kids who kind of showed up in like their Uggs and their hoodies figure out this world. We're shooting at the Palace Hotel. Nobody really cares. No one's stopping to watch. I remember it was such a difference, like the day after the show had premiered. 
And then suddenly like there were people standing around kind of watching and we were like, oh, this is cool. There was, you know, a fair amount of press and expectations and we didn't do that well. 13 episodes into our order, the writer's strike hit and, you know, all production stopped. Everything was repeating and a lot of people watched Gossip Girl in repeats. We're actually trying to work things out. Today's our first day hanging out together alone. We actually came back with a great audience and sort of wider interest than we had had when we started because that sort of addictive quality of the show had kind of kicked in. Please welcome Blake Lively. Gossip Girl was invited to do a panel at the Paley Festival that first year, and that felt really great. It felt like they had caught on that there was something about the show that audiences were really reacting to. Then you were like, uh, okay, if the wheels don't come off of this train, we're going to be fine, and it kept going. Every time we, we got renewed for another season, it was um, selfish personally because we thought, yes, we get to live in New York another year, we get get paid for it, don't tell. <laughs> I think at first, critics were kind of like, this is a silly show about teenagers, but then the people who are actually from that world kind of validated it and embraced it, and it kind of forced people to take a second look. I'm really happy to be here with you right now. Nobody's ever looked at me the way you just did. <laughs>
We have some of the most passionate vocal fans, I think, uh, in the history of television. My Twitter feed is often just a war between Dan and Blair shippers and Chuck and Blair shippers. So it's just dare versus chair in a battle royale. You kissed me back. I felt it. It doesn't matter what you think you felt. I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Even when we were doing the OC, there was only like one or two websites where fans could post comments. And since then, the fan community and the online community has just grown. And certainly Gossip Girl has been a part of that. We'll like walk out of our trailer for a second and a picture will be taken of us. And immediately everything you're wearing, it's like, get this there, get this there, get this there, get this there. Also, he looks like <laughs> You know, <it's laughs> or he looks tired. He looks sad. Do you think he's thinking about, you know, and it's just like, whoa, slow your roll, guys. I'm just like going to get breakfast. <laughs> Why are you still following me, Nate? Having to kiss Chase out in front of the Plaza Hotel, having thousands of teenage girls crying and screaming at me, no, like, why? <laughs> I mean, that's what I was talking about. Our fans were actually a lot older than people originally thought. We hear about people in their 20s and their 30s and their 40s. I mean, I can't tell you how many people come up to me and say, I know I'm not the target demographic, but I love the show. My grandparents still, I get texts from Nami sometimes saying, I don't like you with that MILF anymore. Is this the master bedroom? Let's destroy it. And I'm like, Nami, watch your mouth. I hope she sees this. My best friend was right, saying yes makes everything better. Or no, I'm sorry, it wasn't MILF. I take it all back. It was Cougar. Now this is really gonna get me in trouble. It was Cougar. Nice to meet you, by the way. Um, Nate. Hmm, that's a great name. Uh, and you are? Done now. on the runway of Eleanor Waldorf's show in a design that made by Eleanor Waldorf? Oh, dear. Eric Damon, our costume designer, has done an amazing job since the pilot of really being able to express character through costume and build not just great fashion moments over episodes, but real iconic identities for each of the characters. Exquisite. You exceed even my high expectations. I feel like the clothing really is kind of the actor's coat of arms, and when they put on their clothes, it kind of helps them become the character. Like when Leighton walks in, she couldn't be any more different than who Blair Waldorf is, and she's like, when I put on my headband, I am Blair Waldorf. I'll take that, thank you. Even with hair and makeup, it's the difference of putting on this outfit that Blair would only put together, and that brings the character to life even more. Blake, I think it's a much more symbiotic relationship where Blake inspires Serena and Serena inspires Blake. This girl has it. People that wear these clothes have to be very bold and very confident and very wealthy. So Eric really helps us create our characters with that. I'd ask how you are, but I don't really care. I mean, I, I'd say I'm great. Look at my hair, my clothes, my body. It gives you uh, a body language. It gives you a, a posture that only that particular character can walk with. And you know, when you're in seven inch heels, you're walking differently than when you're in sneakers. And we also have so many places to wear all of these clothes. Move! I have a Humphrey to squash. They really go to a lot of parties. I'm always dressing in these amazing party outfits. Every episode, there's a brilliant gala, or you know, seeing Blair in her prom dress, or Ed in his croquet outfit in the Hamptons. It's sort of glamorous in a way that that old Hollywood used to be glamorous, where people really dressed. I think my most favorite outfit to date has been my debutante dress. I just felt like a princess. You look fantastic. Who are you wearing? Badgley Mishka. It's great. My fashion was was more, you know, sailing on a yacht, you know, like 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 a Nautica ad. What's with the business formal? Are you being arraigned for something? I actually I would always love to see what Ed stepped out wearing. You know, in the beginning it was way more ridiculous. You know, yellow socks and like his ascots and the whole thing. The Chuck Bass scarf evolution into ascot into wide cravat. Uh, <laughs> I like your use of cravat. I thank you, Stephanie. I wouldn't have learned cravat if it wasn't for my time on Gossip Pro. <laughs> it's quite a sad story, actually, because I'm a big fan of ascots, and I had one before the show started, and I can't really wear them anymore. 
I will always go back to what Chuck Bass was wearing on the day that he tried to play basketball. Just play some ball. <laughs> that was truly, truly epic. Of course, the 100th episode, Blair's princess wedding is, you know, I think it's one of the most beautiful weddings on television. Is everything okay in here, Blair? You are an artist. Working with Vera Wang to go into her showroom and actually be able to work with her on a one-to-one -one basis and like see all these amazing dresses. I have an amazing team of assistants that really helped me get in all these Philip Tracy hats and it really worked our butts off to make that look just right. Now, if we can continue. To be on a television show that had access to all the best fashion in the world and then to learn from the best, not just through Eric Damon, but the designers that we got to meet. I heard Mark Jacobs named a purse after her. A lot of them have become fashion icons. Most of them are on the covers of magazines or doing perfume ads or, you know, we see them everywhere. He definitely taught me how to accessorize, particularly in this last season during our fittings. Eric and I are just like a necklace and earrings and a cuff and, and rings and studded necklace and studded coat. We're just like, is that too much? No, put another thing on. Welcome to the Upper East Side. This is Isaac Mizrahi. Steve! So... Okay, Alexa, it's your turn. <laughs> oh, my. We've been really, really lucky in the way that fashion has been a part of the show, and then we've been able to benefit from that and get the fashion community to help us out and be a part of it. And appear on the show. Thank you so much for seeing me on short notice. You came highly recommended by Anna Wintour. So then Eric finds himself having to dress, you know, big designers. Michael Kors was easy because he wears his black t-shirt and his black blazer. Didn't go so well for those who showed up at Blair's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for Rachel Zoe, who had a chocolate fountain pour on her head. She wore that beautiful cobalt blue poochie dress and then we covered it in chocolate syrup. I die. I think they've been intelligent with guest stars and with references. Isn't that Alexandra Richards? people from the art community and socialites. It's kind of funny to see them in their element, but they're so not in their element, and check with them if we're doing it right. This is Tinsley Mortimer. Cindy Lauper. And this is Sloane Crossley, the best-selling author of I Was Told There'd Be Cake. I think that was wonderful. It gave a sense of um, authenticity to the stories and to the world. Everyone's talking about it. When we were doing the ballet episode, I don't know anything about the ballet, so I was just sort of like, tell me who the ballet people are and let's invite them. I think they're called ballerinas. <laughs> Sorry. The limo's taking me back in an hour. Oh, you're not going to the white party? Come on, pretty girls, white dresses. Unless there's a sprinkler, I don't care. I think you're always looking to up the ante. So it started out as the Hamptons. That was a really exciting opportunity. Going to the Hamptons was a lot of fun, like doing the white party and being in this whole other world. Every time we get to go outside of New York, it really is to add something extra special. Nate. You kind of wanted to see Serena and Nate in the California sunshine. Cheers. Yes. We were down in the marina, and Chuck had won a yacht over the course of the summer, and he was riding a motorcycle on Mulholland. Not well. He wasn't riding <laughs> not, it well. Not well. We were at a great mid-century house in the Hollywood Hills, so to really kind of give L.A. the Gossip Girl treatment was fun. Oh! That's... Of course that happened. Paris was like the ultimate. That's been Stephanie's dream since she was a wee lass. <laughs> Ooh la la. Paris is burning and Serena and Blair lit the match. Of course, your flame is hotter than mine. We had been warned beforehand that the show was not very popular in Paris. Um, it might even be canceled. And we were like, well, that is a little embarrassing. But we also don't really care because we want to go to Paris and shoot the show. And our audience will enjoy seeing that. But it was bananas. <laughs> The number of people that came out to watch and wait up all night at like a dirty train station to see Ed or Layton for like five seconds. It was crazy. You would just hear like all of these French girls yelling, Layton, Layton. And you know, Ed Westwick, he literally could not leave his hotel room. And what we found out was these French teenagers were watching the show online also. Au revoir. They weren't gonna wait a year for the show to come out on French TV. I think Paris felt like Gossip Girl was 
its own as well, you know, not just it didn't just belong to New York anymore, it belonged to Paris as well. Blair, come meet Lou Doyon. Bonjour. Bonjour. Oh, well, that trip to Paris, I still relive that week daily. <laughs> This is Chuck we're talking about. He really could just disappear. If you're so torn up about it, stop him. You and I both know you're the only one that can do that. For me, one of the most beautiful moments in the show is when Blair Waldorf runs through the Gare Saint Lazare in that orange Oscar de la Renta dress, and it's just this dark, old, beautiful train station, but have this pop of orange gown that really just came together and was scintillating. Your world would be easier if I didn't come back. That's true. But it wouldn't be my world without you in it. We really think about the music that goes in the show. Alice Pitsavis, our music supervisor, is all over that. And our editors are all huge music fans, too. And our cast. We've used Leighton songs. We've used Ed's band. We've used Taylor. Most of our cast has record deals, yeah. <laughs> so that makes it easier for us. So you go to things like this every week? If you don't like it, you me if I just thought the music would be good. Blake was a huge Florence and the Machine fan. No doubt. Reuniting having Lady Gaga on sort of right as that was all happening. And then, of course, Sonic Youth. Sonic Youth was great because, first of all, they're probably like my favorite band in the whole world, and sometimes you just have to do something for yourself. And they ended up showing up for Rufus and Lily's wedding, which was really special, and then doing an original version of Star Power just for the show. We always wanted the show to be able to function like a magazine. So if you wanted to find out what's a new fashion designer, what are the trends, what's a song that I should be listening to, what's a place that I should go, you could read a bunch of magazines or go online and figure that out, or you could just watch Gossip Girl, and that information would be delivered to you. Does it really play without the other ones? I was going to do Iggy, but I thought it might scare the children. Oh, so prom tomorrow night. What do you say? We stay in, watch some scary movies? The scarier, the better. Absolutely. Yesterday, they were tearing down the Humphrey Loft, and that was the first time that, that it really felt like, wow, this is, this is actually coming to an end. It was sad, man. All my Lincoln Hawk records are off the walls, and all these photos that we all contributed to, to make up this family. Where's the couch from the Humphrey Loft? It was blue, and it was suede, and it was quilted, and it was quite lovely. <laughs> I would like the Humphrey jukebox. <laughs> so I feel like it's loaded with early 90s hits yeah. from, from the time of Lincoln Hawk's reign. We've talked about steely things. We've all tried. I don't want to take that. It's like a statue there. We call it Chuck Brass. Or I'd like take the pool table, but I'd have to get Chase to carry on his back. I think I'll just take my memories, you know? It's beautiful. I wouldn't mind Blair's necklace from Paris or the Harry Winston ring, which literally, when I asked the Harry Winston man if I could try it on my finger, he said no. It comes with two armed security guards, so that's the only... <laughs> and a German shepherd. <laughs> there are so many pieces of wardrobe. I used to make a file of pieces that I really loved, and at the very end of the show, I was going to be really bold and ask for them. But then the file was getting too long, and I was just embarrassed, so I, I gave that one up. We're also fortunate to have been on a show that has been not just such a success publicly, but such a success personally. You know, we've all had such a, a great, positive experience. Shooting in the streets of New York, you know, every day together for six years, it does make people feel like a family, and especially because our cast was so young when we started. I mean, they were teenagers. Yeah. It's so much fun. <laughs> Steph and I always talk about, you know, she feels like the mom, I feel like the dad, and it's nice to see um, the kids have grown up right. It is like a family, and I, I think I'll miss the richness of that. You made my shadow. We won't miss the early hours, but we will miss the, the excuse just to, you know, hang out with each other between takes and catch up. And, and, you know, it's not just the cast that we're friends with, it's the crew. We've had the same crew for six years, and they are also my, my very best friends. A lot of the guest stars say, man, I just want you to know, you guys have the best crew. They'll text me that. You guys have a really special thing, and we've always felt that way, and that's going to be one of the things I miss the most. You are the sweet I'm 
kind of looking at everyone and thinking, oh my God, everyone's grown up. No one in high school reads Gossip Girl anymore. It's for old people. It's been from 20 to 26 for me, a huge portion of my growing up personally and professionally. I need your cooling way. It's just a moment in time. What can I say except, uh, welcome to adulthood. We're all very excited to see what's next for ourselves and for each other. You know, I'm looking forward to watching people that I've worked with for six years now flourish and grow. We learned who we were together. We're all going through that heightened reality together um, and keeping each other sane, I think, through that. I know that it has changed my life in a lot of ways, but it hasn't changed me. It's only made me appreciate everything else in my life that's still really concrete and the same even more. I've taken away so much from Gossip Girl. I've had so many amazing memories of being in incredible places that, you know, when I was a kid, I only saw in books. It's sad that it's coming to an end, but we've had just a blast. From the beginning of time, Gossip Girl time, that is, I think people wanted to know, you know, what's going to happen with Chuck and Blair? Will you go to war with me? I thought you'd never ask. Serena, will she ever find fulfillment? I invited you into my home, Dan, I am my world, and then you just humiliate me. Her relationship with Dan in the beginning of the show was so key. Will that ever come back into play? Some of the old faces that were in the show, will we ever see them again? Who is Gossip Girl? Unmasking Gossip Girl, that's a major media coup. If you were a, a loyal viewer, or if you haven't watched the show in a few years, you're not gonna wanna miss this episode, and you're definitely not gonna wanna miss the last 10 minutes. I have asked Stephanie a lot about who Gossip Girl is. If you watched uh, all the episodes, uh, I do not think it's impossible to figure out. But you won't even give me a hint. It's probably Dorota. Dorota, that'd be amazing. Everybody says Dorota, don't they? Does it even exist? Is it just something in our minds? I can't wait to find out. We shall see.